With Squaresoft enjoying massive success with Final Fantasy VII, the Japanese giant would oversee a staggering number of releases throughout the rest of the PlayStation's lifetime. Along with the return of properties Front Mission and Mana, a great number of experimental titles would grace the console. Some didn't quite pan out, such as the ambitious yet flawed Saga Frontier with its free scenario system. But one title that attempted to meld two disparate genres, Japanese role-playing and horror, would endure as one of the most beloved cult gems from the era, even if critical consensus at the time was a bit more divisive. That game would be Parasite Eve. Serving as a continuation of the 1995 novel of the same name, Parasite Eve concerns NYPD cop Aya Brea. An innocuous blind date to the opera turns into a horror show, as the audience spontaneously combusts with only Aya and the lead actress standing tall. After mutating into some kind of monster and revealing herself to be Eve now, Aya utilises her newfound immunity to begin to chase down the monstrosity before more damage can be done, with help from grizzled police partner Daniel and meek scientist Maida. Squaresoft's penchant for strong storytelling was in full force here, buoyed by incredible FMVs such as the shocking Opera House combustion that opens the game. Aya proves a tough and complex heroine who's easy to root for, and her companions prove just as likeable. The blend of real-world New York and body horror remains immensely compelling, with the world and characters forming an astounding whole. Like many of Squaresoft's games from the time, the visuals prove a tour de force. Pre-rendered backgrounds ooze detail and depth, with the off-kilter mix of New York and horror standing out. Exploring an ordinary sewer while orange-tinted ooze covers normal reservoirs highlights this perfectly. 3D work proves a step up from the then-impressive Final Fantasy VII, with characters exhibiting limbs closer to human, and impressive animations which convey emotion where a lack of facial animations cannot. And the aforementioned FMVs prove a highlight, with the horrifying transformation of a rat into a mitochondria monster lingering long after completion. Speaking of which, the array of monsters you encounter throughout Parasite Eve is disturbing, yet visually impressive. The audio proves compelling too, even if there is no voice acting. Yoko Shimomura's iconic soundtrack sees a range of standouts, from the piano fueled primal eyes to the ominous boss theme. The effects also deserve a mention, with unsettling monster sounds and hard-hitting gunfire both hitting the mark. While praise is indeed warranted for the presentation, the gameplay also proves a standout. Mixing Japanese role-playing with elements of survival horror, the combo makes for a distinctive whole. In essence, players navigate Aya around several locations with static camera angles until engaging in combat with mutated monsters. Tank controls are absent here, which fits considering combat requires snappier controls to avoid damage. Ammo conservation is also absent, with plentiful pickups and even replenishing ammo and health items at the police station hub more likely seeing you struggle to fit items in your inventory, even with Aya's storage expanding with level ups. While some survival horror buffs may turn their nose up, some quieter moments of exploration and puzzling do stand out, including an uneasy trek for a hospital basement as you try to restore power. There is also plenty of hidden paths to find with special gear and items for the keen eyed.
Combat utilises an active time bar, which allows you to freely move while charging and dodge attacks. Once charged, the game pauses before you make your move, be it shooting, using Aya's powers and swapping equipment. While battles are random, foes integrate into the current screen you're on rather than moving to a different battlefield, which proves rather immersive. As you level up, Aya learns abilities which allows her to heal and use special attacks. Weapons prove the most interesting part of the experience, as guns boast a ton of customization. Each gun comes with attack, range and bullet stats, which can be increased either by using points earned from levelling or using tools to move stats across. You can also move properties across, such as special bullet types and buffs, but the catch is, unless you find a super tool, the weapon is dismantled upon moving across elements. It proves a game of risk, as different gun types prove more useful than others, and while it may deal more damage, being limited in other areas can see you struggling. It proves a gratifying system. Parasite Eve proves a taut experience, with an initial run likely taking around 15 hours for most players. But it never feels like the pace slows, with one breathless chapter leading to another. The good news is, X Game offers great incentive for seconds. You can carry over one gun and armour by renaming them in the prior playthrough, and tougher enemies start appearing sooner. But the real incentive is access to the Chrysler building a 77 floor bonus dungeon, which rewards unique gear, tougher monsters to fight, and a hidden ending for those who defeat the final boss on top. It's a lengthy endeavour, and can easily see you playing on for another 15 hours. While perhaps still short compared to some JRPGs, it never drags or leaves the player bored. Parasite Eve stands out amongst Square's vast library, a stunning mix of horror and role-playing that still feels remarkably fresh over two decades later. The story proves engrossing with a strong cast of characters, combat feels tactile and immersive, and the presentation is incredible. Whether it's exploring the deserted streets of Soho to scavenge for ammo, dealing with nasties while navigating Central Park, or the disturbing opening in the Opera House. It all stays with you, long after completion. Anyone with an affinity for the PlayStation's vast library should seek this one out as soon as possible, as it's a must-play in almost every sense. <laughs> 